Where's this going? You have another channel for this woman, which you can check out. It's called Better Together. I'll try to remember to link it down below. Anyway, so it was it was energizing and exciting last week when the Gulux Gulia Yelps doll was released on Mattel Creations, and I got an email from the folks at Mattel saying they were sending me a Gulia doll. If you have been here from the early days, you will know that Gulia is my favorite Monster High ghoul for so many reasons. I mean, the first one when I saw her was just like, I love red and black. So like when I saw this, I was like, what? Oh my gosh. And then her facial sculpt is absolutely one of hers and Spectra's I have always found to be very striking but Gulia's is just because Gulia has fuller lips and um I just love the sculpt I love so much about Gulia and I, and I love her personality and and she became very important to us as a family because um it, it, it seemed to us that she was autistic and, you know, the representation for autistic people in general was non-existent, you know, 12, 13 years ago when these dolls, or 14 years ago when these dolls first hit the market. And, you know, it, it didn't exist, right? And I think a lot of, a lot of kids saw themselves in Gulia. When they introduced Gulia, you're like, are you going to show the doll? Yeah, eventually. In introducing Gulia, uh, they did this wonderful live stream on Mattel Creations. Um, if you have not joined the Fang Club on Mattel Creations, it's it's ten dollars a year. It's nine dollars ninety nine cents. I join the membership every year for the Barbie collector stuff because you get access to dolls that you can't get if you're not in the in the Barbie collector thing. There's forums, but in the introduction of that, so I highly recommend it. Also, to be clear, Mattel sent me this Gulia Yelps doll for free. Thank you so much. I'm going to open the box. We're going to talk about the doll, I swear. Um, and also, you know, she's kicking off the Fang Club. And and I just think it's a, a really cool thing. But the live stream, so wait, I bought these glasses. I was at the, um, I mean, they don't look great on me, but it was kind of gulia ask. I was picking up a prescription at the, this is all over the place today. I, uh, this is I'm on my like third cup of tea already. Uh, I was at, picking up a prescription and I saw these glasses and I was like, oh my gosh, they're kind of like Gulia. In the live stream, um, they read Gulia's diary and they read a section from Gulia's diary that I vaguely remember. But now that I I heard them read it, I realized what incredible representation this was for autistic people. So I'm going to read it again because I know the live stream was glitching a lot. Oh, and I just want to show you, you're like, how did you have that handy? So back in like 2010 um, or 2011, I think, I, I bought this uh, photo album because a four by six photo album is a great place to store the Monster High Diary. <laughs> And so I have, whoops, I got a lot of empty space because they stopped making the dolls. I have the Monster High Diaries in here. They're not in any order at all. Um, anyway. <clears throat> August 31st. This is from Gulia Yelps' diary. I received my Zombies Are Monsters 2 t-shirt and bumper sticker in the, mall, in the mail today. The bumper sticker will have to go onto my wall until I can get my license, but I will proudly wear the t-shirt under something else because I hate drawing undue attention to myself. Yes, I am being contradictory here. I want to make a statement, but I do not want to be noticed while I'm doing it. Why a statement? Well, it's not as if zombies are treated poorly by the legacy monsters, but sometimes we do get treated like background noise, which is a little disheartening. Yes, we only speak zombie. Yes, we slowly shuffle along. Yes, we often appear to be devoid of personality, but the same observation could be made about any teenager. Regardless, I am just as special as any pedigreed monster. Speaking of pedigreed monsters, my eye coffin just went off to remind me I'm supposed to meet Cleo, Cleo Denial tomorrow. And then September 1st is a beautiful entry about how Cleo Denial befriended her 
And uh, she, you know, Julia says, it's hard to socialize when you're as shy as I am, but Cleo will not allow me to sit on the sidelines. When we first became friends, she took me around and introduced me to everybody, even Claudine. Now I am included in every social event, and I have so many good friends at Monster High that while I am still shy, they will not allow me to be invisible. And so, yeah, so the being seen thing, the being accepted thing. I think Gulia represents a lot for a lot of people, probably not just myself. And so uh, we've all been clamoring for a, a, a legacy collector Gulia doll since they started doing these. I am a little disappointed that she didn't get a Haunt Couture box because I think that would have been really cool. At the same time, I do love that she got a very special box. Um, and she is currently sold out, unfortunately, but with the new system, we've been having less trouble with bots. So I hope you did get her. But this is a, a, you know, this isn't just about this doll that Mattel very graciously sent me for free. But, and by the way, I don't say that to rub it into you. I, I say it because the FTC requires me to disclose that I was sent a doll. Either I was paid or I got it for free. Like if somebody paid me and sent me a doll, I have to tell you that. And if they sent it to me for free, because that's the same as getting something of value. Because it is. So anyway, so the box. This is the box they sent me. And zombies are monsters too. Uh, and that's what she talked about in her diary. So I thought that was really cool that it's on the box. Um, makes me want to go and get a zombies are monster 2 t-shirt. Um, monsters. It's like a monster. They are monsters. Zombies are monster. They're just one kind of monster. So I didn't even, I opened it up just to kind of look at how it was packaged and my husband was standing over me and then he was like waiting for me to dive into the crinkly paper stuff and reveal her. And I was like, here, just look at the picture, honey, because I don't want to get this stuff all over the dining room. And also I want it to be an exciting thing that happens on camera. So here's our little FTC reminder of all the things that you need to tell people. Um, and there's, there's a second copy of that. And uh, this is so, so cool. It's not going to fit in my, my photo album, though. But I think I will frame this because it's our ghoul. And this is called a ghoul lux. Uh, ghoul lux Gulia Yelts. And I like that she got, like, her own special name and stuff. Um, and so regarding the Fang Club, just let me give you all the deets. Join the most scream-worthy Gorganization the all-new Monster High Fang Club is here. We are proud to announce our debut doll, the smartest ghoul at Monster High with brains for days, Gulia Yelps. In a look that's sure to make the student body rest in pieces, Gulia wears sheer puff sleeves layered over her signature brain print turtleneck paired with a high gloss jumpsuit, yada, yada, yada. Uh, <laughs> uh, a skeleton crown, exoskeleton corset, glow worm earrings, and a gravestone purse complete Gulia's look as a bona fide fashion icon. Um, with Fang Club membership, you gain access to member exclusives, early purchase opportunities, behind the screams content, and more. Let your inner monster shine with frightfully fantastic benefits, and it is $9.99. Zombies are monsters, too. I love how that's sort of just kind of hidden in the brain pattern. I love that they went all in with the brains. <laughs> the brains. Um, and, you know, I was, like, highly offended in the reboot when... <laughs> when uh, they got rid of Gulia and gave us Monica or Moanica, I always called her Monica. Um, did not like Monica. <laughs> it just, it just, it, it hurt. It hurt. And I'm keeping this box, definitely. Um, oh, I could keep some Monster High clothes and stuff in here because it's got brains in the interior. All right, let me dust her off with something. Here, I have a sweater behind me. Let me dust the box with the sweater. <laughs> Hashtag. So professional. Here she is. There she is. Oh my gosh, I haven't even looked at her. <laughs> um, wow. The box is amazing. I really love the box, but it's not as cool as the packaging for the... Mm, mm, Haunt Couture. Couldn't think of it. Um, wow. So look at this artwork. I love the photography they did on her. It is very, very uh, cool photography. And I've been loving, I'm seeing a lot of people posting, um, people who've gotten this, uh, and, and, and they've posted their, uh, look, it's even got like her little dead fast, like a little bit of stuff about Gulia. The packaging is definitely simple. Um, 
you know, some of it has to do with going for a new look and some of it has to do with right now the cost of doing anything in the toy and doll world is like so ridiculously expensive that to keep things within a price point for collectors is, 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 it's a, it's a lot of work. Uh, trust me, I have a, I have a, a partner, a client that I represent who does have a toy, uh, that's on the market and it is just so expensive to try to tweak packaging and it's just, it's like, whoo, I've learned a lot about why things are the way they are. So I am going to take her out of the box. I do wish that she came with a Sir Hoots a lot, like, cause I need those. I just wanted to quickly show you. So Gulia always kind of got left out of the fancy releases like Sweet 1600, um, uh, I don't, uh, Ghoul's Night Out. I'm trying to think of the different, you know, the really fancy looks. And like, like I was annoyed because in the movies after Scaris, Gulia was always wearing her Scaris outfit. Like she didn't even get new outfit drawn for her for new movies and that that kind of bummed me out because I do think she's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous but there were a couple of releases where she did get um she did get to go a little a little fancy for us uh one of my favorites now these dolls have been on I mean they're 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 a little worse for wear I, I am not an inbox collector uh so a lot of my dolls are pretty rough looking at this point um they're inside cases now but they still get dusty so this is Dot Dead Gorgeous. This is Dot Dead Gulia. Absolutely one of my favorite Gulias of all time because she did get to get dressed up. Like, you know, it's a party dress. They were all going out on the town. She's got this bubble skirt. It's just, you know, it's got brains. You know, it's really, really cute. We see that, you know, bones were always a theme with Gulia. And this one, somebody please remind me what the name of the two pack with Gulia and Mo was. It was something about being dead forever or, and I didn't look it up before I started making the video, I'm sorry, but this is also, this is probably the fanciest that they ever made Gulia before. She's got this amazing, amazing updo. She's got her little corpse flower thing going there. Um, she's got this pretty, pretty party dress, big, and, 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 uh, yeah, and, and, uh, Mo is wearing, I think, purple pants. It's upstairs. But, you know, we've got some more bones. We've got, like, hand earrings here. And I just, she never really got to strut her stuff, I feel like, the way the other ghouls did. And so I'm very excited about this release. So that was a lot of this. <laughs> A whole bunch of information about me. And now I am going to take Ms. Gulia Yelps out of the box and we're going to take a closer look at Gulux Gulia Yelps. Be right back. She's out of the box. These glasses do not really look that great. And also, they're too small for my eyes, so I keep seeing the glasses. So we got to go back to the clear ones. Okay, so um, I I did watch the live stream. Glitched quite a bit for me, but I, I, did, I did watch it. So I know more about the fashion design than I usually do. Um, and uh, it was it, it was so well thought out. And I'm blanking on the doll designer's name right now who did the who did the clothing. She is a fashion designer and she kind of told the story about how she ended up designing for dolls and uh, it was really, really interesting. I don't know if the live stream is still up. Uh, you might need to join the fan club uh, to see the replay. Not sure. I could be totally lying to you about that. But there's a lot of thought and excitement that went into this. But the first thing that blew my mind was that they put one of the larger waist clips on the doll for the very specific reason that they wanted it to go around her hips because she has this bone corset and when they were trying to use the regular waist clip, it was bunching up the pleather and shoving the corset up and just messing up the whole look. So they were like, you know what, let's just use the bigger clip and you can put it around her hips. And I feel like I want that on so many other dolls because I, 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 I feel like so many times I put 
a doll. And this is one of the reasons that I switch over to the Kaiser stands for a lot of dolls because the Kaiser stands, the clip is more flexible. And so you can open it up to put it around the waist and then you don't get the scrunching or the mushing. And uh, so that made me so excited. This crown right here, she's got, I mean, she's giving me because of the crown Statue of Liberty vibes. There is nothing else about this doll that says Statue of Liberty, but every time I saw the crown, I thought Statue of Liberty, which is ridiculous. This was uh, designed for this doll, um, and all of the bone parts of, of the, the outfit are modeled after they looked at Skeleta and, and how they designed her, and then they kind of mapped things off of those designs. So I think that's a really nice callback. I think this is such a cool way to do a crown for her. These earrings, um, a lot of people were like, wait, those are Monica's, but you actually saw these back in the original too. So don't feel like they threw Monica in our faces. Uh, the puffed sleeves, which I love, I, I'm admitted, you know, I do think a little bit Seinfeld and I'm like the puffy shirt, but I think it does take this sort of sleek outfit and give it a little bit more like femininity and and like frilliness and maybe like a little fantasy by putting the puffed sleeves on it. It just does give more of like a, you know, it's Gulux, like she's going to wear it to an evening party, you know? It's like a little bit of a princess vibe to have puffed sleeves. I always feel like I see puffed sleeves and I'm like, princess! Um, but underneath, so her shirt, the brain shirt, it's like one of those like shoulder shirts, it's not really a shirt. It is under here. And then they put these pretty ribbons, love the red ribbons, love that she's wearing this pleather uh, shorts, bustier onesie thing and then they also you know in trying to figure out how to design let me take her off the stand mm, there we go uh this the 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 corset actually goes around the back so it is very much like she's wearing someone's rib cage and spinal column <laughs> And I think that's really cool. And because of the way things were laying when they did this, they did put the seam is up front because doing it the other way did not work. There was a lot of bunching and it just didn't look as sleek. And they really wanted this look with the vertebrae. So that is why the Velcro is in the front. Love this little kind of bondage vibe with the stitching. She's so pretty. I mean, she just has such a beautiful, beautiful, oh, love Gulia so much. And her hair, by the way, is just long and straight and silky. It's, I was watching, as I was watching the live stream, I kept seeing all the designers were like playing with Gulia's hair because it's so soft. And I, it made me feel, it was very relatable to me because I think a lot of us doll collectors as a as a soothing mechanism perhaps uh, do this with doll hair a lot. Um, I have some baby dolls upstairs in my living room and uh, two of them have kind of longer hair because they're more like toddler dolls. And I will like, I'll be sitting there talking to someone or just if I happen to be holding the doll, I'm doing this. It's very, very relaxing. And then moving on down, the boots. So this is the first time they got the go ahead to do fabric boots. And so these are like a pleather and they took her original uh, brain fabric. Uh, I think it's from her Scaris outfit. And um, and they just modified the print a little bit so it would have more more depth. I think she said they enhanced the shadow. So this would just be have a little more depth to it. And I really, really like it. And they're kind of like a pleather. And then the, you know, Gulia's always had the drippies. So we've got this nice drip going on here. And then the shoes are, you know, they're boots. So they go down and into this just ridiculous heel because it's monster high and these are hands so these are bony hands um that make up the heels i just i love how much like just went into that and then of course she's got her glasses but i did I had to actually take her glasses off and I'm going to do it again for you guys. And then it's going to freak me out because getting them back on is really hard. I might have to ask Caden to do it for me because I almost messed up her hair the first time. So she has very similar eyeshadow to um, things we've seen before with Gulia. She always had kind of a 
smoky eye thing going, but because we were going ghoul luxe, you can see this poor doll has glue on her head, um, they just went super, super dark. And also the designer is uh, does wear glasses when she's not wearing contacts. And so she understands that when you wear glasses, you need to really amp up the eye makeup. The reason um, I had to take these off before is because underneath the glasses, there is like a plastic, there was like a, a clear plastic sort of piece across the eyes so that in the box, these glasses would not screw up the eye makeup. And I just think they did such a beautiful job. She is, oh my gosh, I, in addition to all of the other reasons to love Gulia, the sculpt of her face, like I said, her and Spectra. I would love to see, I know the next doll we're getting is going to be the Rochelle Goyle Fang Vote. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get Caden to help me with this because I do not want to screw this up. Um, and, uh, but I would love to see a Spectra. And I saw a lot of people on the live stream uh, asking for a Spectra. And I think, you know, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, I mean, she was a really cool character. You know, she had the ghostly gossip and all that going on. But I think one of the other reasons that people love Spectra is her facial sculpt is off the freaking hook amazing. Um, She's so like chiseled and ah, uh, and I think that's that's one of the things that always got me with Gulia is just she has such a beautiful sculpt. Of course, they kept and notice I did the red lips. You know, Gulia's always also been known for these just really, really beautiful red lips. It's kind of been a signature for her, and I think. You know, if I think about her character and, and what we read in her diary about that dichotomy, you know, between wanting to stand out and make a statement but not be so noticeable in doing it, like... I get that. I felt that so strongly. But I think red lipstick is also one of those things that can do that. It's a very simple, you can be just very laid back in everything that you're wearing and you just pop on the red lipstick. And it, it says something about a person when they wear red lipstick. It says, it says something about confidence. It says something about their personality. Um, and this is why I wish that like we could just get to the time period where men can wear makeup, like just like just just men wear makeup, women wear makeup, non-binary people wear makeup, people don't wear makeup. But I think makeup is such a great way to just sort of put more of your personality into the way you look. If you're not into fashion and hair, which I'm not, but like makeup, makeup and my nails is where that part of me comes out that that sort of artistic sensibility if you will um and so you know i always loved that gulia just was always out there with those bright red lips and she's gorgeous lips too she's these beautiful full juicy red lips love 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 gulia so much so I am so excited. I am so very grateful to Monster High for sending me Gulia Yelps. Gulux, Gulia Yelps for free. Very much appreciate it. Um, I, you know, and I'm, I'm so grateful going back in time to Garrett Sander um, for creating a character at a time when, like I said, we weren't, we weren't acknowledging um, the different ways that autistic people, people with autism, whichever one you choose, um, ha, you know, can be. We, we were still a little bit in the, in the Rain Man mentality, you know, going back to when they were first coming up, this like 2008, 2009, um, and especially in, in, in females, there was no understanding of, of what it looked like group. And I do love that it, it seems, I believe it's been uh, confirmed as canon by the voice actress who voices Twyla, but in G3, Twyla is an autistic person. And there are some hints in her music video. There's a little bit of stimming about her books. Um, and so I'm excited that we're carrying that forward. You know, Gulia is a different personality in G3. And, but we, you know, and I was a little pissed off because I thought we were gonna erase autism from Monster High. And I'm so excited that they didn't because I think it's more important than ever that we show that, you know, show those people and show those people in community with friends having lives 
and and uh, you know I just I get very emotional about Gulia. Always have, always will. So thank you all for watching. Thank you again to Metal and Monster High. Check out the Fan Club because um, it's nine dollars or it's ten dollars. Nine dollars and ninety nine cents a year. I mean that's not even a dollar a month. And I'm not just pushing it because Mattel said push it, which they didn't. But um, I've been doing it with the Barbie collectors for years and so when a new doll comes out you know I can get in there to buy sometimes they're exclusive sometimes we just have early access and it just makes the process a lot easier I go in the Barbie forums a little bit but I'm very excited to hang out in the Monster High forum and see what's going on because some of the Monster High stuff like on Reddit and whatever can get a little catty and nasty and rude and whatever so anyway I'm gonna stop talking now thank you so much for watching I love you all so much and I will see you again real soon right cool Mm. <laughs> Bye!